My name is Lorenz Raber. I'm an interventional cardiologist working at Bern University Hospital in Bern, Switzerland. The trial is asking the question whether vulnerable plaques that are responsible for myocardial infarction or sudden cardiac death in a large proportion, whether we can ameliorate those plaques by high intensity lipid lowering with the use of alirocumab on top of high intensity statin therapy. We enrolled a total of 300 patients presenting with either non-STEMI or STEMI. They were treated in their culprit lesion with a stent. And if they had non-obstructive disease in the two non-infarct related vessels, we imaged them using intracoronary imaging consisting of three techniques. First, the combi with a combined catheter using intravascular ultrasound and near-infrared spectroscopy. Those two catheters can assess the black burden and the lipid pool, both important vulnerability characteristics. And the second catheter we used for intracoronary imaging is optical coherence tomography, which is a high-precision method that allows to measure the fibrous cap thickness, which is again an important vulnerability vulnerability characteristic. Patients after the imaging were then randomly allocated to receive either alirocumab 150 milligram bi-weekly on top of high intensity statin therapy consisting of rosuvastatin 20 milligram daily or placebo bi-weekly on top of rosuvastatin 20 milligram. After 52 weeks Patients underwent, again, the same intercoronary imaging procedures using IWAS NEARS and OCT at exactly the same localization. We have shown that alirocumab on top of high-intensity statin therapy as compared to placebo on top of high-intensity statin therapy reduces significantly percent atheroma volume, which is a measure of the plaque burden. It actually amounted, it was reduced 2.1% in the alirocumab group and 0.9% in the placebo and statin group. On top of that, we provided data and evidence on a significant reduction in the lipid content of the plaques and of a significant fibrous cap thickening. Altogether, this provides evidence that alirocumab initiated early in patients with acute coronary syndrome can lead to plaque regression, delipidification, and stabilization. We also assessed a correlation between the on-treatment LDL and the reduction in the vulnerability markers like black burden, lipid content, and fibrous cap thickness. And interestingly, when we achieved LDL levels below 50 milligram per deciliter, the reduction in plaque volume and lipid content and the thickening of the fibrous cap was achieving the highest values. Therefore, the conclusion really is that the lower you get your LDLC in this very high risk population, the more regression, the more delipification, and the more stabilization you achieve in untreated non obstructive lesions with vulnerability characteristics that potentially could lead in the future to myocardial infarction or coronary death. Well, this is a mechanistic study providing evidence for the benefit of an early administration of a PCSK9 inhibitor, alirocumab, in the early setting of ACS, and that with that regimen you achieve plaque regression and stabilization. However, what the 
potential next step should be is a clinical trial that actually investigates to which degree clinical outcomes can be reduced by such a treatment regimen. We, I would like to make you aware of one specific design feature of the Pacman AMI trial, and that is the entry criteria with respect of the LDLC. Most patients did not receive a statin at entry, and their LDL had uh, to be above 125 milligram per deciliter, which is rather low. So therefore, it really, the Pacman AMI really provides the grounds for a more aggressive and early LDL lowering initiated in patients with high risk characteristics.